Dallas as the referee. Much has been said about 1999 and the title decider then, but what should be pointed out is Dallas has handled six old firm matches since then. And if anyone can handle this, he can. The scene is set. Rangers on 87 points. Celtic on 79, a game in hand. It's crucial. It's the Premier League leaders against the UEFA Cup finalists. Last season, Celtic won the title by a massive 18 points. They come into this one, eight behind. They have to get all three points. And Rangers haven't lost at Ibrox in 18 months. There's the first foul of the game, John Hartson on Lorenzo Amaruso. 20 seconds gone. Yeah, no question about this. Lorenzo just ready to play the ball back to Stefan Claus and deliberate free kick there, John Hartson. He won't get away with too many of those from Hugh Dallas. against Hartson, this time no free kick and Chris Sutton almost diverted that one back to the Welsh international striker Neil Lennon Hartson gets away from Amoruso Larson has the opportunity now Sutton and Moore clears what a chance that was for Henrik Larson with little more than a minute gone took too long he had a real chance of getting his team in front after that historic goal on Thursday night. He should have scored Henry Larson, but great play from John Hartson in the build-up to it. He just brushes Amoruso aside here, could have went on his own, but seen the better option was playing Larson in, and I don't know why Henry hesitated there, he would normally hit that with his left foot. That might just have been the goal which resuscitated. Celtic's title challenge. But there's still time. Two minutes gone. Fast, furious, frantic. Probably a few other words beginning with F as well. And it's only started. I'm sure it'll continue that way. There's so much at stake for both teams. But early on, the Amoruso Hartson duel, that could be a real interesting one. Both very good players. Lovely pass from Ronald to Boo. Kinesia! He's missed it. A miss at either end in the first two and a half minutes. Both should have scored. There's no question it should have been a goal. It should be one each, but this is a magnificent pass. The Bears got it to perfection. Marvellous weight in the ball. Kanija is only asking him to stick it in the back of the net. He gets over the goalkeeper. The right thing to do, but doesn't get it on target. He's got time. He should certainly stuck that in the back of the net. What an opportunity. He scored his first old firm goal in the CIS final. And... Uh, you don't get too many greater opportunities than that. Wonderful supply from De Boer, maybe the shape of things to come. Such a big influence in uh, Rangers midfield, as is Barry Ferguson. True grit to win that back. But Conterman, six starts on the trot. So elusive, De Boer. So effective. Now Newman. Loving Krantz floats an early ball in. Valdi heads it clear to McNamara. It's a rip roaring start to a fixture which has produced some incredible football this season. Great start from both teams. So impressive Barry Ferguson early on, we keep talking about what a marvellous, marvellous vision he has, what a talented footballer, but it showed great strength and determination as well. I think there's a lot of nutmeg by Ron De Boer and Neil Lennon, that could be remembered. Celtic Rangers has produced 12 goals already in the league, in three league games so far this season, and uh, we might well have had another two to add to that tally, with both Larson and Kinesia missing great chances early on. 
After Newman's last old firm match before he departs the scene, after five years with Rangers. Evan Prince against McNamara. And that came off Jackie McNamara on its way behind. Tenacity from Lovencrantz won it. More than great pace for me, Rob. He gave Jackie McNamara 10 yards of a start over 40, 50 yards there. And really got there and put Jackie under pressure to win the corner kick. Yeah, the pace got him there, but he wasn't giving up even when McNamara tried to let that one cross the line. Moore and Amoruso head up into a position territory. Rickson's corner, Amoruso's free header. All sorts of inquiries going on in the Celtic defence, Amoruso left on his own. It's a great opportunity, you're right, he's not picked up, he gets away from Bobo Baldi, Rab Douglas, he's nowhere, he's not going anywhere near it. If this is on target, Rangers are in front. Bobo Baldi was the one picking him up, he's the one they'll be pointing the finger at. Martin, you know, I think he's just having a, a quick word with Bobo Baldi in a moment. Martin O'Neill almost on the pitch at the moment, he's right out at the edge of the technical area because he was hugely alarmed by that defensive lapse which allowed Amoruso the chance. Chick, what's he been saying? Yeah, he's telling Bobo Baldi, or the at Baldi for not picking up the lead by Amoruso and also he wants the third defence to come out a bit too deep. Another clever pass from De Boer, this time it's cut out, and he's heading for Lovenkrantz, who had gone through the middle. Well, it might well have been 2-1 Rangers after six minutes, as it is, it's 0-0. First threat from a guard, was he handed off by Amaruso? No free kick, says Hugh Dallas. I think Hugh Dallas is right here. It's just a shoulder to shoulder, isn't it? It's old fashioned shoulder charge. Lorenz Amaruso just shown he's got more strength than Didier Gatt. Yeah, you remember those old shoulder charges <laughs> from the black and white days, Sandy? I loved them. <laughs> Stefan Kloss, the only ever present in the Rangers side, he's playing his 45th game of the season, that's the lot. Well won against Sutton by De Boer, then he overran it and lost it. McNamara to Thompson. Larson holds it up, Conterman wins it back, but an arm was used and Celtic have a free kick. Is there a problem with Frat Douglas, Douglas Chick? Yeah, there's a problem with Rab Douglas, I'm not quite sure what it is, but uh, uh, Martin O'Neill, Brian Scott's drawing the attention of Martin O'Neill, Brotto is going out to warm up, and Rob Douglas definitely has a problem, he's going to get some attention now from Brian Scott, the Celtic physio, there it is, it's that old muscle injury in the leg again, Rob, probably going. Lennon's free kick, Amoruso is headed away. Hunterman does well against Sutton. Now Barry Ferguson. Holds off Baldi, no mean achievement, and gets a free kick. That's good play from Michael Moles. Protects the ball so well, when it's played into his feet, he uses his body to back in to protect the ball. He earned the free kick. Javier Sanchez Broto is getting ready for action, Chick. Yeah, the Douglas problem has uh, reared its ugly head again, a rug ugly leg, if you like that muscle injury. He's coming off. Javier Sanchez Broto coming on. Well, a change Celtic didn't want to make, but they're going to have to. Rob Douglas will be coming off, and Javier Sanchez Broto coming on. And McLeish doing his usual scribbles as well. And he will look to put immediate pressure on the new goalkeeper when he is installed. Scotland keeper Douglas off and former Livingston goalie Javier Sanchez Broto on. What sort of impact will this have? I wonder. Well, it's a blow to Celtic to lose Big Rab. He's such a talented keeper, such a great presence. But Broto, remember, at Dundee a few weeks back played exceptionally well, was probably Celtic's best player that day. So he's on decent for him. It's his first old firm game, so this will be slightly different for him. But he is talented. But as you say, I'm sure Alan McLeish will be saying to his players, let's put them under pressure right away. 
Well, we've had enough drama in nine and a half minutes to last the whole game, but uh, hold tight, there's more to come. Long may continue. Douglas, of course, had a double hernia operation this season, and as he made his comeback from that, he had a thigh injury. And it's clear the recurrence of that, which has led to him coming off. Henrik Larsson plans to keep the ball well away from Broto, if at all possible. McNamara played it in, and then Fernando Ritson played it away. Tunisia's flick. Ulrich Larsson to Alan Thompson. Lovely layoff from Hartson. And that's a great ball in by Larsson over the top of Stefan Kloss and no takers for Celtic at the back post. I think everyone was surprised, A, that Larsson got there, and B, that he managed to get the ball right into the danger area. This match is being played at an incredible pace. Loving Kranz, Ferguson, that's got to be a foul given against Jos Valharan. Rangers were looking for a foul for the first challenge on Loving Kranz, who's in a lot of trouble. It's a late challenge, no question, but it may have been a free kick, there's no question but this one. I think it's going to be a stomach roll, Loving Kranz has been caught. A real concern about Loving Kranz. Having huge problems there, and uh, you could see immediately the, the frantic signals from both sets of players to get uh, medical attention to Lovenkrantz. Concern written all over Alec McLeish's Alec face, and uh, I think most people inside the ground shared that the minute uh, Lovenkrantz hit the deck, Sandy. There's two or three players about him. It looks as if he stumbled there, almost lost the ball, but it's, it's in his ribs. It's the challenge here from, from Alan Thompson, I think it is. There's, Bars right into him. He won't want to lose Loving Kranz. His pace is so important to Rangers in this fixture. It was a thumping challenge from Thompson on Loving Kranz. It looked a blatant obstruction to me, but presumably Hugh Dallas was letting the game he did. flow. He played advantage, he would have awarded the free kick to, to Loving Kranz. But Valharan certainly made up his mind with the, the challenge of Barry Ferguson afterwards. That's a sore one, you can tell from Peter's reaction, he's in a lot of pain there. Well, he could write a book about this game already. Quite remarkable the amount of incident we've had with only 12 and a half minutes gone. Let's hear from Chip. Yeah, the word from the Rangers bench is that he was just severely windy there, couldn't get a breath. He's OK, he'll get time to get it back, but uh, he will play on, Rob. Meanwhile, back at the match. Moroto could be tested here. He does, and he's shooting, and everyone stays metres back from the ball. Barry Ferguson's effort took a deflection. Still not clear. Ronald De Boer! It's wide. Another chance is missed. Unbelievable. The free kick is blocked by the wall. The wall does his job. But there's reaction after it. Michael Moles has a go. It's blocked again. Moles is a second goal. And De Boer, it really couldn't do much more. If it's on target, I think it would have been blocked by the Celtic players in front of him. But all De Boer's only inches away. Alec McLeish thought he was about to celebrate the opening goal of the game. And he, like De Boer, couldn't believe it when it went wide. Peter Lovenkrantz, happily, is back on the pitch. Badly winded, only knocked out of his lungs there by Thompson's challenge. But uh, the concern at the time was it might be worse. Larson to Hartson. Henrik Larson again! A goal saving challenge from Craig Moore. That was brilliant defending. It's a magnificent tackle from Moore. Tell you, Rob, I haven't seen a goal yet, but I'll guarantee you it's coming. They can't be far away. 
This is surely not going to be a goalless draw, is it? <laughs> it's a marvellous game. What a tackle from Craig Moore. Henry Larson makes a magnificent run forward here, and that's excellent timing. Any young players watching that, that's the way to keep your eye on the ball. Time your tackle. And it shows clearance with Larson again lurking. Rickson up to Moles, beaten by Baldi. Rangers have a free kick. Amoruso, Baldi, you think, doesn't really need to use his arms to get up for uh, headers, but uh, Hugh Dallas reckon he did there. Well, if you take the words out of my mouth, you should dominate that area without any problem. On the ground, it'll be a different battle. Loving France with the cross. And Broto grabs it. The defending looked pretty uncertain there. It did. And the Ronde Boer's in there, backing up the forwards again. Great movement from John Hudson, using his body to hold off Craig Moore, looking for obstruction against the Rangers defender. He looks up towards Hugh Dallas in vain. And bodies dropping all over the pitch. This time the free kick is given for Conterman on Lennon. It's very competitive, as you would expect in this fixture. If I was Alan McLeish, Rob, I'd be slightly concerned at times that uh, Rangers are going with Moore and Amoruso against Parson and Larson, 2v2, and those two strikers are very talented. You've got to be aware of the uh, times need the extra cover. Neil Lennon's free kick, it's beyond John Hudson. And Rangers responded to Stefan Kloss's shout. And the ball bounced through to the keeper. Valharan onto the loose ball to Burr. His linking play is so crucial to Rangers. When he's not there, you notice his absence. I'm just watching the game as well, Rob. Jackie McNamara is actually playing right wing back, and Didier Gant is playing uh, centre midfield. It's a bit strange as well, a little bit unusual for McNamara. Great run from Peter Lovenkrantz. It was direct. It was damaging, and it's a free kick, followed by the yellow card for Didier Agat. He can't have any complaints, it's very deliberate. Robin Kranz shows him a clean pair of heels. There's no chance of getting the ball there, Agat. Robin Kranz is gone, and can't argue about the yellow card. Peter Robin Kranz having the sort of influence in this fixture that we're used to. He's also getting the treatment, isn't he? I think Celtic are very aware of the, the problems that Loving Fans causes them. They're trying to close them down, trying, trying to take them out of the game. It's well within striking distance. Ferguson over the ball, Amaruso just behind him. And further across, you see Bert Conterman. A talking to for Neil Lennon from referee Dallas. Peter Lovenkrantz is in a menacing position there, just on the wide side of the penalty box. Ferguson rolls it for Amoruso, very quickly, that was Jos Valharan to block the shot. Good defender there from Valharan. Rickson to Amoruso. Lovely pass from Michael Moles, and what a good cut-out, that was crucial from Baldi. Good play from Rangers, Amoruso, he spots the run of Michael Moles, tries to find him, and it's only the, the statue of Bobo Baldi that cut that one out. Rickson's going to kick in the way by Hartson, that was Ferguson back in, Moore, another chance for Ronald De Boer. And the rescue mission was mounted by Alan Thompson. You can't see this very often, Rob. It's a poor first touch from Ronald De Boer. That was a real opportunity. It's not like him. Just a little flick on from Kanija. In from Rickson, the corner kick. Flicked away by Baldi. Ferguson with McNamara at his back. And Contram. Sun comes out of the box, that's about all that's been missing in the first 19 minutes. That 
the goal, of course. Rickson's run halted by the combined efforts of Valharan and Larson. That's well won by Amri, so he wasn't waiting. Ferguson well, hooks it away. <laughs> Can't believe Cook played a Kadija on that header. as it's a joy so far in a, an attacking sense for Celtic. Here comes Valharan on the end of Hartson's pass. Now Larson lost the ball under his feet. Was he fouled by Craig Moore? Hugh Dallas said no, and Moore prodded the ball clear. Advantage played despite the challenge on Ferguson. Kinesia, the Burr. Shirts were swarming around the door there as he threatened to move the ball on. That was good refereeing there from Hugh Dallas, allowing advantage. Keep the game flowing. McNamara stopped Lovin Crunch. And uh, Baldwin launches it. So many chances, no goals. 21 minutes played at Ibrox, the final Old Firm match of the season, live from BBC Scotland. Man of the match, competition as ever. And this is the number to ring 0900 10 225. You can win a, a new Game Boy SP, a signed Man of the Match top, a supporters kit, an SPL family ticket. All the prizes, and of course the big prize for Jose Mourinho, the Porto coach, could be the UEFA Cup on the 21st of May in Seville. Celtic, though, have other ideas. And that will be live on the BBC as well. This match looks as if it might just have calmed down to a frenzy. It has been the most incredible opening in a fixture which always comes up with surprises. Good movements, good passing, Valharan to Larson. And I think that Larson couldn't get that back to Jos Valharan, who was in a very menacing position. That was great play again from Celtic in the break. Henry Larson, his, his touch hasn't been the, the best today, it's not like him either. Maybe just a little bit tired from Thursday night. Shot of Michael Moles. Alec McLeish didn't fancy it one little bit. He's out on the touchline as Henrik Larson breaks forward. Hartson and Thompson coming in. Alan Thompson made the late run. That's a great header from Rickson to get in front of the Celtic midfielder. Larson tries again, but it's beyond both Thompson and Hartson. Stefan Kloss tries to play it. Up to Kinesia. One by Lennon. Chris Sutton, miss hit cross, and it almost worked out for Alan Thompson. It's a corner kick, it was deflected wide. Good play from Celtic, good ball in again. Alan Thompson almost getting there, just taking the deflection, got the break that time. John Hartson, of course, was uh, the old firm match winner in March. In a season of big goals. Larson on the near post. 24 minutes gone, Celtic's first corner. John Hartson tried to put it in. And a scramble in the six yard box. It's a great delivery from Alan Thompson. So hard to defend against. Lots of big bodies in there attacking the ball. And John Hartson's unfortunate. Just couldn't get the break. That's hard to defend against. Look at the amount of bodies in there. The ball can end up anywhere. 24 goals this season for Celtic, plus four for Wales. And uh, 17 goals in 17 league starts for Hartson. That's an incredible tally. It's good 
attacking of the ball from Ulrich Larsson, pitched into this high-tension fixture, having been cooling his heels on the bench for the last couple of months. And Alec McLeish, his 75th game as Rangers manager, and in that time only three domestic defeats, only once when he's, since he's been in charge here, as he lost to Celtic. Four wins and three draws out of his eight tastes of the old firm match. I think Rob is, is Alex, uh, one concern at the moment is time would be when Rangers attack, both full backs are going forward and leaving the man for man at the back. And I think they're getting exposed with Celtic having a counter attack. I think it's something he's got to be aware of. And Alec McLeish trying to get his message across. Chick, what is the message? Well, certainly it's been delivered to, to Barry Ferguson a moment ago. I think he's won the ball played in over the back for uh, Love and Kranz to chase down uh, the Rangers' left side. He's using a little word or two with Contiman as well. Uh, but he's certainly, I don't think, happy with the, 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 what he's getting out of the Rangers team in his early stages, particularly in the middle of the park. I'm not quite sure what Bert Contiman was intending with that pass, but uh, it was uh, way off target. Celtic have a free kick for the challenge on a gap. Rangers thought they were off and running. Six minutes gone, and the biggest surprise of the lot is that scoreline in the top left hand corner of your screen. Rangers nil, Celtic nil. How could that be? There's, there's been an incredible tempo to the game the first 25 minutes or so. The players really can't keep that going for 90. But I'm certain we'll see goals. McNamara's free kick, and Craig Moore let it go! And it's touched away by Stefan Gloss, and the shot from Sutton blocked by. Craig Moore, that could have been the craziest old firm goal of all time if that had ended up in the net. I can't believe the mix-up. It really is a mix-up, it's a free kick, not long from Jackie McNamara. It's just him, was a sent to the box, hoping to get attacked. Klaus thought the defenders were dealing with it. He wasn't really concentrating on having to deal with the situation. And it struck the post. He got a break, no question, I thought it was in. Absolutely incredible. That's well worth another look as Stefan Kloss breathes a huge sigh of relief. McNamara's free kick into the danger area, bounced through. Kloss thought it was going to be dealt with by someone else. Back off the post from McNamara. Okay, we didn't see it there, Rob, but just after that, the ball broke to Chris Sutton. What a magnificent blocking tackle from Craig Moore. Larson. Larson. Drifting out wide. And that's a penalty. Celtic have the chance to take the lead. It's given against Amoruso, and he may complain, but he's got no complaints. Yeah, he's gone beyond them, he's knocked the ball beyond them, he's stayed where he was, and Hearts is into him, he's over his leg. Hugh Dallas right away, pointed to the spot. Badly timed from Amoruso. And now Celtic can hit the front. And significantly, it's not Larson, it's not Hartson. Both have missed big penalties this season. It's Alan Thompson to take the responsibility. 28 minutes gone. Can Celtic hit the front? Yes, they can. Alan Thompson's fourth Old Firm goal, his seventh goal of the season. And the UEFA Cup finalists lead the Premier League leaders. Show as you like, watch as the goalkeeper. See Stephen Cross move to his left. Thompson decides, I'll go the opposite way, and just slots at home. Perfect penalty. Stay very calm. That cultured left foot. And Alan Thompson has Celtic ahead at Ibrox. Remember, it's a year and a half since Rangers lost to anyone on their home patch. The last time, September 2001, and it was Celtic. Good contribut. Good challenge from Thompson, the goal scorer. Rickson's pass for Moles. Still has it amazingly, Michael Moles. In from Kinesia. McNamara did well. Great play from Michael Moles. Michael Moles holds the ball up so well here. Really shouldn't win this one, but manages to get there before Bobo Baldi. He's got nowhere to go. Finds Kinesia, he tries to find Lovingkrans, 
A good defender from Jackie McNamara. Newman skips away from Agats. Knowles holds it up for Lovenkrantz. It's Valharam. A decisive clearance. I'm just thinking, Rob, since uh, Brotos come on to field the play, I don't know if he's had much to do, has he? Hasn't seen much of the ball at all. Barely seen it, has he? It's been half an hour at Ibrox, packed with incident. And just the one goal, Alan Thompson's penalty. And Celtic, if they can win here, will feel that they might just sow some seeds of doubt in Rangers' minds about where the title is going to end up. There might be a few twists and turns on the way before this championship is won. Well, Hannon hit the deck. Said he was tripped by... Tunisia, nothing much malicious about it. Alec McLeish looks on, there have been quite a few chances for his team to take the lead. But they had to look on there as Alan Thompson beat Stefan Kloss from the spot and Rangers won down. Alec, I'm sure, was happy with the start to the match, but after the first uh, 15, 20 minutes or so, really, Rangers haven't done too much going forward, and Amoruso, I'm sure he'll point the, big Alec will be pointing the finger at him regarding the penalty kick. Amoruso, of course, in the spotlight this week. Speculation that he might be moving to Blackburn Rovers. Graham Sunez certainly has him on his short list of possible summer signings. McNamara aims for Hartson. And free kick is given against the Celtic striker. He claims he was just trying to get on the end of the long ball in, but... Fernando Rickson went to ground. I don't think he can have any completes there at all, John Harson. He's leading with his arm. He's trying to get himself a yard of space to get an advantage. He would ask straight to work the free kick. I'm sure they're quite working very for yourself things down for a minute. clearance, flipped on further by Sutton, that was caught with a miscue on the header, Agatz, powerful, held off Lovenkrantz, beats Newman, great one from Agatz, now for Larson, pop off Amoruso, and it's deflected off the head of Craig Moore, Larson's shot deflected over the top, great play from Henrik Larson, doesn't get any joy the first time, but left foot is across the goalkeeper, I'm not sure where it's going, the question from Craig Moore certainly takes it well over the bar. I'm not sure if Stephen Cross was getting the first one. Another Larson effort. He might just have the first half hat trick. Chances at the other end as well. Thompson's corner. Baldi was there, but uh, Craig Moore was ensuring that the big defender didn't get a clear header on it. Martin O'Neill, Martin O'Neill, it's Celtic's 54th game of the season and their 60th of the season will be a certain game in Seville. That's a foul given for the challenge on one of Dupur by Sutton. Showing highlights of this, you just show the whole thing. Newman, Long Crouch, Contraman, his touch not good enough, under pressure, possession won back by Celtic, Hartson to Larson, he overran it, Amaruso intercepted, that's terrific play for Moles, brilliant skill, lovely balance, good touch, good control. Top-notch stuff from the Rangers striker. Tunisia trying to get away from Larson. 
unsuccessful. I think Kinnage is looking for a free kick there, but assistant referee on the far side, he's right beside it. I think Rangers have got to try and get the ball more to Lovingkrans. Initially he was on the ball quite a bit, causing problems. Just about ten minutes away from half-time, and uh, we'll all lie down in a darkened corner at that stage, I think, to try to recover from uh, the exhilarating football we've seen and the numerous opportunities to score. And it's amazing that the only goal we do have has come from the penalty spot because there have been so many opportunities from open play, Sandy. Yeah, it's been marvellous, it's been a great spectacle. Great advent again for Scottish football. And I'm sure the goal score is not finished. Here comes Wixon. Kinesia just in front of him. Neil Lennon, great play from Lennon. Two terrific challenges, firstly on Wixon, then on Kinesia. And there you saw a real hunger to win this match. Great determination from Neil Lennon. This is what he's good at. When the ball's there, 50 50s, he'll get stuck in, he'll try and fight his corner. Does that well. And Kinesia, you can see him all over the top of him there. Larson's free kick, Hartson flicked it on for Larson. to go Larson, couldn't quite stretch out to get on the end of that. Alde beats Moles. The man speaks Thompson. Ricks into Kinesia. Well, he's nearer 40 than 30, Claudio Kinesia, but he can still shift it. It looks sharp there. Thought he was going to get there first, but uh, Ulrich Larson defended well. I hope uh, Arthur Newman understood the hand signals there from Alec McLeish because it's difficult to hear anyone speak inside this atmosphere. Lennon plugging the gaps again in the midfield for Celtic doing such a valuable job. The gaps, Hartson away from Amoruso, and that's good covering from Rickson. I think Chip, you can tell us what those Alec McLeish hand signals meant. Well, I've looked up my dictionary of Alec McLeish hand signals, and I think he's trying to speak to... There's a message about Contum in the area he's marking at the moment. I don't think he's happy with the area that Contum is in. Whether he wants to push further forward, I think, Rob, that might be the problem. Ferguson on the bar. Ferguson supporting Kinesia and Moles just outside the area. Now Contiman to Rickson. So I think holding their shape and winning it back. Good defender again from Mullet Lawson and Claudia Kinesia. John Hartson wasn't quite sure where that was. And the foul given against Craig Moore. It's a fascinating tussle, this. It's marvellous to watch. A little individual contest going on over the field. McNamara deceived Lauren Kratz. A gap to Larson, and a quick look behind him. John Hartson didn't make the run that uh, Larson forecast. We're live at Dens Park next Sunday, Dundee against Rangers as the title run-in continues from 2.40. There might be several significant games still to come. Can Celtic hold their lead here? Rickson's cross, and uh, not quite what he intended. Definitely not, I think he tried to wrap his foot around the ball and get it into the six-yard box. He just caught it all wrong, put it inside the Celtic fans instead. In among the beach balls <laughs> and the uh, rubber rings and the uh, suntan lotion and <laughs> not quite sure about the beach balls. I don't think there's a beach in Seville, but uh, well, and I think we'll forgive that little inaccuracy <laughs> at the moment. In Viva España say the banners among the Celtic supporters looking forward to their first European final since 1970. I think Martin O'Neill Rob's got to be the happier manager at this moment in time. 
His formation's good today, playing Diddy a gap further forwards, helped to, to snuff out De Boer and Ferguson. Haven't seen too much of them at all. If those two don't play, Rangers don't have the same threat. Good skill from Chris Sutton. In went Hartson as well. And Stefan Cross with the ball in his hands. Probably still trying to work out how that Jackie McNamara free kick from about 45 yards hit to his right hand post. His face might have matched his strip at that stage, and then it got in. Inside the last five minutes of the first half at Ibrox, and what a first half it's been. Alan Thompson's penalty separates the sides in terms of scoreline, but uh, we might have had six or seven goals instead of just the one. Molston Newman looking for a final flourish in the old firm matches. Arthur Newman. Ferguson chips it in, it's beyond Kinesia, and McNamara cleared. Rangers looking to pile on pressure as the first half comes to a close, but that was great ball winning from Jos Haran against Ronald de Boer. And uh, John Robertson and Martin O'Neill doing the auxiliary ball boy duties down in the technical area. Check a bit disappointed with Robbo's first touch there. Well, it's been a while, hasn't it, since he was roaring down left wings and uh, we've got a smile back to the Rangers fans just through the ball out there. And there's no doubt that Celtic and better spirits at the moment, Rob. Kanisha, De Boer, again it's Ulrich Larison making a, a great ball winning challenge for Celtic, they really are attacking the ball well, pressing the ball whenever Rangers get possession. Lots of stamina at the back has been immense today, but they're so often that's just after effects of that one, Ronald De Boer trying to win back the ball. 42 minutes on the clock as Agatz gets away from Lovenkrantz, back for Larson. It's 2 0. Three minutes from half time. Celtic two goals ahead. John Hartson has an old firm match winner already this season, and that could be another hugely valuable goal. It's a great goal from Celtic's point of view. Point of view. Lovey Kranz diving in there. What a touch from Henrik Larson setting up John Hartson. And from there, the big Welshman just doesn't miss. He keeps his composure, doesn't hammer the ball. It's cushioned side foot. Realises where the goalkeeper is and just puts it past them for a marvellous finish. Stefan Kloss nearly kept it out with his boots, but not quite, and it's John Hartson's 25th goal of the season. 18 in the league in 18 games. That's some return. And uh, you get the feeling that psychologically could be a big blow. It's a big one, there's no question. I think Kjell is going to be too happy with loving Kranz there. He dived in against the gap, allowing a gap to get beyond them to create the opportunity. Jake, I don't think anything will beat uh, Martin O'Neill's leap into the air um, in El Porto the other night, but uh, it was a pretty satisfied look about him as that John Hartson goal went in. Yeah, I think that the Celtic bench, and I was talking to Martin O'Neill, but I saw the health interview before the game, Rob, but it was, they were in tremendous form, that they felt the whole place had been lifted, no tiredness after the game and the long journey back from Portugal, of course, through the night on Thursday evening, and John Roberts as well tell me that he felt that was a turning point, and I think the Celtic bench were very, very confident in this game as I talked to him before the match. Celtic may be tired after their European exertions, but it's amazing what adrenaline does, Sandy. Well, it keeps you going, doesn't it? Uh, I think the tiredness, if it's going to come about anyway, Rob, it's going to be later in the game, not the early part of the match. But when you're, you're playing as well as Celtic are at this moment in time, I don't think you get too tired. Moore to De Boer and Ferguson. 
Bowen Ferguson a lot will hinge on how they can perform if uh, Rangers are to mount a recovery here. Foul on Contamon by Larson. And uh, we've just 15 seconds left of the first 45 minutes. Two minutes to be added. It's the Celtic fans who are on their feet as that Ferguson pass goes astray. And as the first half comes to its conclusion, Thompson's penalty and John Hudson's strike have these Celtic fans with their sombreros even happier than they were Thursday night. I think the fact that Celtic in front of a lot of it comes from the, the midfield area. They've crowded the area so much that Ferguson and De Boer just haven't had an opportunity to, to lift their head and play passes. Craig Moore hits the deck holding his face. And uh, there's a, an angry reaction to that incident involving Hartson and Moore. Craig Moore doesn't tend to go to ground easily. Let's look at it. That's an elbow. John Hartson does that so often. He leads with his arm. But his elbow certainly caught Craig Moore on the throat round about his mouth. He's not facing Moore, so I'm not saying it was deliberate, but there's certainly a lot of contact made. I think John Hart is trying to say it was an accident, I'm trying to apologise. I think you said it there, Sandy. He led with the army, undoubtedly had the elbow out as he went for the ball, but this was not uh, a blow aimed with his elbow. All think. players do it, Rob. All strikers got Moore at him. And he's caught him. There's no question about that. I don't think it's deliberate, though. And Hugh Dallas got a very, very good view of the incident. He didn't award the free kick. Well, it may not have been deliberate, but uh, that doesn't make uh, Craig Moore's chin feel any better. It's still this, painful. This stage. If, you, if you watch football all the time, especially big players, they, they, go up, they try to use their arms for momentum. And they certainly caught Craig Moore. As I said, he's not looking at Moore at the time, so I don't think it was deliberate. This match needs a strong referee, of course, and uh, Hugh Dallas explaining himself to, firstly to Lorenzo Amoruso, then to... Alan Thompson, there was a, a fair old scrum down around the grounded Craig Moore. He's a big boy, he'll be OK to continue. Yeah, he'll be fine. And he's played well. He has played well, he's been excellent. I think John Haas is trying to go over and apologise to Craig Moore, but it's right in front of the Rangers fans, so it's maybe... I think there's a gesture there from John Hartson as well, which is silly. John Hartson indicating there to the Rangers fans that he thought Craig Moore dived and uh, that doesn't endear him to the home support. No, I, don't think, I don't think he died, I don't think Craig's that kind of player. There's no way it was a dive, but I think that was what uh, John Hartson was implying. The two of them are just in the Alcorn far at this moment in time and... I don't think there's any real animosity between the two of them. Yeah. Craig's recovered. I think, I, I think they'll be exchanging Christmas cards by the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly three minutes added, and this might be a suitable time in which to hear the half-time whistle, but there's still more drama to come in this high octane old firm fixture because John Hartson I think will be yellow carded this time yeah, it's, it's not Fernando Rickson down there's no question about that it's a free kick and Hugh Dallas has got no option but to award the, the yellow card but John Hartson shouldn't go into that challenge he's got to know it's coming at half time he's got to know he's under pressure from the fans from the referee and you just stay back from it the experience that John has I'm really surprised we're in that challenge the most incredible first half at Ibrox is finally over and Celtic have the lead by two goals to nil. Fascinating 45 minutes, that's for sure. Let me just remind you, by the way, that after this match is over, we'll see all the goals from yesterday's Bank of Scotland Premier League matches, but the focus, obviously, is here at Ibrox. Let's go out for the second half, then. Celtic 2-0 up, back to Sandy and Rob. Rangers have won every game at Ibrox in the last year and a half. They'll have to go some to win this one. Paul Lambert, a spectator for Celtic, but uh, Mikel Arteta no longer a spectator on the bench for Rangers. He's on during the half-time interval, and he will replace Bert Konterman, pretty ineffective Bert Konterman, at the centre of the Rangers midfield. And uh, 
Rangers need to create chances, and that's the man to do it. So that's the, we're not too surprised at the change, Rob. We said at the start of the game, Celtic really had to go for it. They've certainly managed to do that. Now they start of the second half, Rangers have to go for it. At this moment in time, they're losing all three points. The change is a very positive one from Alan McLeish, and I'm pretty certain you'll find that Ronald De Boer will push more and more forward. Arteta Ferguson will play in the middle of the park. A big guy like there has got to be. Hope for more from his team in the second half. He's going to look for more of a contribution from uh, De Boer, Ferguson, Kinesia, Loving Kranz, all his attacking type players. Part one was amazing. Can part two possibly live up to what happened in the first 45 minutes? It's 2 0, it might just have been 5 3. Chance after chance after chance. Celtic had to make an early change, of course. Sir Rob Douglas going off. The chicks got more detail. Just to confirm it is a groin strain. Can't tell me the medical staff can't tell me at this moment just how serious it is, Rob. But uh, he, he's not in the dugout. He's remained in the dressing room for treatment, but it is a groin strain. Here's Kanisha. Tries to get beyond Jos Valharan. Goal kick. Is the outcome as Rangers looked for a corner? I thought I was a corner kick to be honest with you. I thought Balharan got the last touch in the ball. Kanija tries to take him for strength and pace here. Balharan holding them off, protects the ball, but there's a touch there. And I think Balharan got the last touch, should have been a corner. And that would have been within 30 seconds of the restart and a rear touch of the ball for Javier Sanchez. Broto. He must be amazed at how little he's seen of the ball since he's come on. Ferguson, Amoruso, Newman. Michael Moles doing some more excellent hold-up work. That's a poor pass. Gat intercepts. Amara gives it plenty down the middle. And back from Moore to Kloss. I'm just looking at Ron De Boer early part of the game, Rob. He's right up beside Michael Moles. Looks like they're going to play 4-2-4. As Rangers push, they have to push to get a goal back. That always opens up the opportunity for Celtic to hit on the counter attack, at which, of course, they're very effective. It would be two incredible results in four days if uh, they first they reach the UEFA Cup final and then blast their way back into the title race. That's the prospect for them at the moment, two mil ahead. No, it's, it could be a marvellous four days for Celtic, as you say, Rob. They certainly played very well first half. The Rangers still have the points on the board. And it's still in their hands, whatever happens here. It's a poor exchange between Newman and Lauren Grant. Keeps it for Sutton. Did well for Sutton. And that's a free kick. A tug at the shirt of Agat. And a lot of responsibility rests on the Rangers captain, Barry Ferguson, in the second half. Can he have the influence in that central area to turn this game around? Mara with the free kick. Larson on the end of it. She's got the break of the ball of Rickson. Um, that shot was deflected off Fernando Rickson. It's a corner kick. It's great play from Henry Larson. So strong. This is a 50 50 ball with Rickson. But he uses his body so well. He's so quick off his mark. And didn't see much of a deflection there, but the referee certainly awarded a corner kick. I think Rickson was right on top of him as he, as he struck the shot. Goals already for him at last in this season. And don't forget number 40. Left foot of Thompson. Round the bird at the near post. Back from Larson. Drilled back out for Thompson. Hartson now. Touches it to Sutton. Larson's there as well. Larson. Had 
Ireland's header, missed by Ferguson. Looks into Kanisha. And he gets it back from Arteta. who is undoubtedly guilty of a badly timed challenge which conceded the penalty to Celtic which gave them the lead Ferguson caught by Sutton a foul against Neil Lennon for his challenge on Fernando Ritson. Good day over that one. Neil Lennon just a little bit late. A foot and then a hand. Acknowledged by Lennon. Celtic trying to make life difficult for Rangers. Lovenkrantz plays it in for Moles. Back for Ferguson. Shooting chance. Blocked by Baldi. Lovely pass from Henrik Larsson, top quality to Hartson. Good running from Alan Thompson, getting beyond the front two. And disappointed with the cross, which went straight to Stefan Poss. What a first-time pass that was from Henrik Larsson. Yeah, he's played so well. Celtic trying to play in the break now. Asia, linking the passes together. Now with Lovenkrantz. Moles back to Newman. Tugged the shot wide. Arthur Newman claiming there was a deflection on it. Hugh Dallas says no. Uh, I think there was a slight touch there. Assistant referee in the near side of Hugh Dallas between the two of them are looking at each other. What happened? None of them obviously seen the, the touch. Yeah, it was a definite touch, should have been a corner. I think Celtic have set a solid second half, Rob, just to get eight players behind the ball as often as possible. Just maybe a little bit like Bovis did, but week almost. Good touch from Sutton. And uh, Thompson pass just misses out on its intended target, Larson. Pace of the first half, but then it never was going to be. Balls to the bur. Kinesia. Lennon intercepts. Larison out to Thompson. And Michael Moles is still on the ground, slowly getting back to his feet for Rangers. And Alec McLeish mulling things over with Andy Watson and Jan Bouters. Made the first half change. But so far, it's had little impact. Uh -huh, it has, Celtic have defended very well, getting lots of bodies behind the ball, but uh, Rangers have got enough quality on the field to, uh, to work back into the game, but Celtic do defend very well when they have to. It's hard to break down the blanket defence of eight people. Neil Lennon was having an angry blast at Barry Ferguson there after the, the ball was knocked out of play by the Rangers skipper. Friends United in that midfield. Amoruso, he can be influential for Rangers as they try to rally. Ferguson into the feet of De Boer. Kinesia running off him. Felt he was fouled. Hugh Dallas unimpressed. Makes a good run, gets it back. 
And misses the chance, and Michael Moles was right alongside him had Rickson released the short pass. It's a good move from Rangers, though. They're trying to put Celtic under pressure, driving from the back. Rickson into the boot, tries to play the little one-two, picks up the second ball, maybe should have passed it. I like to have the shot, but just couldn't get it on target. Yeah, he's going to make a ball in a marvellous position to slip him in. And you would have fancied Michael Moles to get a goal back there. And Rickson played him in. Good goal that play, though, from Rickson. And Thompson run into trouble. And Tetris the loving crunch. Looking for De Boer at the back post, and Valhallen makes sure it goes active play. Rangers have a corner. No question about the corner that time. I think Callum McLeish's team, they're trying to lift the tempo of the game, they're trying to put Celtic under pressure. And if they can get the, an opening goal fairly soon, that pressure will continue. It's at his corner, Amoruso's header, and it goes wide. It's a chance. It's a good ball from Michael Ateta. Again, Amoruso, not quite a free header, but a good powerful header. Gets there first, just can't get on target. Yeah, the difference between that one and his first half header was the fact there was about three Celtic players challenging there. And there was nothing free about that header for Amoruso. And uh, the chance went wide of target. Sutton down, free kick against Ferguson. Not an awful lot in it. Good play from Chris Sutton, though. Protecting the ball, and Barry just been a little bit impatient. That's good awareness from Ulrich Larison, taking the free kick quickly and sweeping it wide for a gats. And Ulrich Hartson, Noah Moore made contact with that. And uh, as you look at some of these individual tussles going on around the pitch, none more intriguing than uh, Hartson versus Moore. I'm sure there are lots of respect between the two of those players. Both international players, both very talented. One a great defender, one a great attacker. It's a advantage Hartson so far, you might say, because uh, he's scored, but uh, Craig Moore has been pretty outstanding in his own defensive way. Loving Kratz with the pass. After Newman on the charge. And for Ronald De Boer, it's 2-1. Rangers get the goal back. 12 minutes after the restart, Ronald De Boer strikes for the 18th time this season. Well, we felt it was coming, Robin. It's a marvellous goal. After Newman made a great overlap, magnificent ball into the ball and hit the box. Ronald De Boer is so good at that, gets a yard of space, just peels off the defender there, and the header's on target, giving Brodo no chance whatsoever to save it. Great movement here from De Boer. He made his run, then he dropped off, found himself plenty of room. And he was able to guide the header away from Broto. And it's now 2-1 Celtic. And have we a match on our hands? That's Ronald De Boer's fourth Old Firm goal. And his third against Celtic this season. De Boer's made a big difference. Just the position he's playing. Much more of a threat for the forward. He is again the goal scorer. He's reignited Rangers hopes. Good turn from Michael Moles. Flicks it, looking for the Burr's darting run. Valharan escorted it back to Broto. They're so good at that, Rangers. The short passing game right about the edge of the ball. It's great movement, good awareness. reaction was that Ronald De Boer goal check. It's actually more the reaction of John Robertson, Robbie's screaming at the defence to come out, he thinks they're sitting in too deep, he wants them to push forward and come out and go to Rangers. That's cross deflected off Amoruso, and Celtic have the corner kick. De Boer doing some defending this time back with Ulrich Larson. Thompson's delivery, inviting for Hartson. And Sutton slipped as he tried to pounce on the loose ball. Now with Lennon. 
Sutton against Ferguson. The back heel against Kinesia. Great play from Barry Ferguson. That's composure. Rose has it. Arteta. Great challenge. Jackie McNamara left Arteta in no doubt about that one. Just listen to the noise at Ibrox. As the Rangers supporters try to drive their team on to another goal. of Kinesia, Arteta into the box, Kinesia's cross, and that's there, gives it straight to Ronald De Boer, and you don't want to do that. It's a half a chance for Ronald De Boer, good ball from Kinesia, but a poor header from Didier Gatt, right to Ronald De Boer, lots of bodies in front of him, get, I guess on target, that's a good ball in, Didier Gatt is not too sure what to do with it, De Boer gets on target. And you'll not be surprised to know that the ball's down at the other end now. <laughs> Larson against Amoruso and out. It's a goal kick. There's been little to choose between these teams this season, and this match just bears that out, Sandy. Yes, it's been a great game. They're two great teams. There's no question about that. There's a goal from Ronald de minutes in for the last Old Firm match of the season, live on BBC Scotland. Thompson and Hartson for Celtic in the first half, De Boer for Rangers in the second. And it's very delicately balanced now, this. Ball winning from Sutton, but they ran away from him and he clattered into Moles and conceded a free kick. I think there's a skill from Michael Moles as much as anything else. His touch is so good, one way and then the other. Chris Sutton get no chance of getting the ball and just batters into Michael Moles. Thank you, Dallas, for having a quiet word. This is your last chance, Chris, no more. Sutton's first start in eight games for Celtic after breaking his wrist. Still playing with a, a strapping on that left wrist. And obviously far from 100% sharp. But, uh, boy, does he put in a shift. Amoruso won't need too much encouragement about having a shot at goal. And he will see this as well within his range. Useful strike. McNamara was in the way. Rickson for De Boer, down to Arteta, and that's a free kick given against Neil Lennon, and Rangers with another set-piece opportunity. Good play from Mikel Arteta, read the pass from Ronald De Boer, got there first, that's why Neil Lennon committed the free kick. It's all Rangers at the moment, they're getting closer and closer. Martin O'Neill is clearly concerned about the, the trends of this game. And uh, he's been out up and down to the touchline more than once. Amoruso has been surgically removed from the discussion about this free kick. And it's... Mikel Arteta, who prepares to strike, and strikes it far too high, harmlessly over the crossbar, and that's a waste, and uh, <laughs> Lorenzo Amoruso is the first to tell him so, Chip. Yeah, it was incredible, actually. Alan McLeish came out at the end of the, the, the technical area, and he's screaming at uh, Lorenzo Amoruso, who was giving him a deaf ear, of course, so he sent uh, Craig Moore hurtling down the pick to get Amoruso away from the free kick. And in the end, the Renz Amoruso is entitled to say, well, maybe I should have taken that after all. And I tell you what, I think Celtic are now thinking about a change, Rob. I think we might see uh, Stillian Petrov 
or Sean Maloney or both, in fact, introduced into play. Larson chasing, and Mauricio clears. And uh, still in, Petrov is getting himself prepared for business. Celtic want to make that change pretty quickly now. With Rangers currently having the upper hand. Petrov has played a big part in these fixtures over the last few years. And uh, Ronald De Boer is certainly having a big influence in attack for Rangers, having been pushed forward at half-time from his midfield role. That's going to be John Archon coming off, we hear. As Stadion Petrov comes on, which will presumably mean Chris Sutton being pushed further forward. Corner kick from Arteta. Sutton heads it out. Now Lovenkrantz with a chance to create. He won't do it with that pass. Artson stooped to head clear, but it was, in truth, a disappointing effort from the Danish winger. And the substitution will happen now. And it is indeed Petrov for Hartson. And John Hartson getting the treatment from the Rangers supporters as he comes off. But he's done the business for the Celtic fans because he scored goal number two for Celtic. And it's striker off, midfielder on. And uh, Petrov might just have a say in how this finishes. Newman's throw. And it and challenged as he cleared. And all the way back from halfway. Stefan Kloss has been a quiet man in recent times. A la Bruto in the first half. I think John Hassan could be happy with his, his day's work. Rob, as you say, got the important second goal, but also won the penalty kick. Yep. Great return from the Welsh international striker who is having the season of his life. Amoruso, De Boer, flicks it on, hoping that Moles would be there. Larison cleared, but at the moment Celtic can't keep possession. Amoruso goes up a gear. Good pass to Kanisha. John Marissa again. Thompson's challenge on him. McNamara flicks it wide for the gap. Here's a chance for Didier Gat to use his pace. But he seemed to me to be in third gear there. He's won a free kick though. Robin Kraj looks as if he's in trouble. He doesn't touch the ball, that's why it's a free kick. Did he, a guy gets to the ball first. But again, as he did in the first half, surely Peter Lovenkrantz didn't need to dive in. No, he's got enough pace. Yep, he's got to get there. He's got to keep him going so he can match the run. I wouldn't be too surprised if he's seen Neil McCann sooner rather than later. I think I make that the third yellow card of the match. Lovenkrantz for Rangers, Agat and Hartson for Celtic. Hartson, of course, is off the pitch. Alan Thompson. With a shot at goal from long range, blocked by Ferguson. Lofted in this time for Baldi, who'd stayed forward. And able to direct it towards Larson. Rangers in a hurry. In a hurry to square the game. But it's got to be controlled attacking from Rangers. They can't throw everything at it. And that was a... Uh, well challenged by Craig Moore on Henrik Larsson. And uh, Hugh Dallas might be grateful for the Specsaver sponsorship here. <laughs> I think Craig Moore certainly gets a lot on the ball there. This is the momentum of Henrik Larsson that puts him well up near. I actually think that was a good referee. Thompson, it's a great ball in, and uh, Amaruso was stretching. Agats. Petrov, Jackie McNamara, 
Good running from Petrov again, and a free kick given against Lauren Kranz, who's just been booked. Yeah. It's not been a masterclass in tackling today from uh, Peter Lovingkrantz. No, certainly not. It's much better going forward. I don't think it'll be too long before we see Neil McCann. Gypsy Lee Clark has spoken. Alan Thompson's delivery in with Chris Sutton. And a terrific challenge, not for the first time in this match, by Craig Moore to deny Sutton a free header. I tell you, Rob, that's a magnificent challenge. This is a goal if Craig Moore doesn't get there. Chris Sutton wouldn't have missed that from that area. The pace was on the ball, the power would have been there. And Craig Moore certainly stopped the third goal. Neil McCann is readying himself. Alan Thompson swings it in, it was a great delivery, and it was a flashing header which went just wide. Great corner kick from Alan Thompson, lots of pace, power on the ball, and Henry Larson gets here first, just can't get enough on it, just slices off his head, and wide to the post, I think Michael Arteta would have done his job if it had been sneaking inside the post. It's going to be McCann for Kinesia, we hear. Good closing down for Rangers all around the pitch. Full of energy, full of industry. And uh, don't forget, in all the excitement, the Man of the Match competition, if you want to take part in that, on 0900 10 225. All those prizes I listed earlier. And, well, Craig Moore got a touch on that. But uh, Hugh Dallas gives the goal kick. I think, uh, I don't know if he's going to give a free kick, Rob. Craig Moore certainly touched the ball, but Henry Lass has knocked him after that. Well, he seems to be awarding the goal kick. Yep. And uh, the Celtic fans, <laughs> unfortunately for Hugh Dallas and Craig Moore, had a good view of that. Yeah, they did. I think they're assisting the far side. Rangers make a change. Loving Krantz and McCann both on the pitch now for Rangers. They will go at it down both flanks as they look for an equaliser. Gertie Volks will monitor the performance of Neil McCann with some interest. Well, you begin to look at the clock and see 72 minutes played. And the clock is ticking in Celtic's favour. But still plenty of time left for more goals, and the way this game has gone, you almost expect more goals. Good run from Craig Moore, finally caught by Chris Sutton. And who wins it back? It's that man Moore, he's been immense. But that's a mistake by Ferguson, which lets in Sutton. Larson's alongside him. Still it's Sutton. Now Larson, straight out cross. Great chance on the counter-attack for Celtic. That was a chance, no doubt about that. Barry Ferguson giving the ball away. Sutton and Larson were onto it so quick. Chris Sutton does the right thing here. Drives at Amoruso, waits for Larson, plays him in, gets a shot on target. An easy one for Klaus. Still in Petrov, the Celtic substitute, full of running and taken out by Craig Moore. And it will be another yellow card. Good driving play from Still in Petrov. Committing defenders. Craig Moore tries to get the ball as soon as he can get the ball. He takes Petrov out of the match, can't have any complaints at all. Ronald Abu are silly for getting involved there. Yeah, he thought he was fouled by Bobo Baldi down the pitch a moment earlier, the Burr, and he's been whinging and whining at Hugh Dallas, and the, the outcome of all that is uh, the game's fifth yellow card. Rangers now 3-2 up in cautions. It's been the game with everything. I think it'll continue, Rob, because Rangers will, will throw people forward. They will take chances to try and get the equaliser. And that's going to leave gaps at the back, as we've seen there with Larson starting a minute ago. Petrov that time. Valley McLeish there, doesn't have any option. Has to try and get the next goal, has to try and get the equaliser. We saw uh, Peter Lovenkrantz winded in the first half, and uh, still in Petrov would have felt that one, I'm sure. Felt the full force of Craig Moore's block. 
first tackle, just the block. We're in the 75th minute at Ibrox. Alan Thompson drills the free kick for a gut's head. Sutton, almost for Larson. Amoruso makes a mistake. Henry Larson, to be fair to him, went down and sprung but up very quickly. As uh, Celtic fans hopefully thought about a penalty. Not much chance of that, but it was a desperate lapse by Amoruso in defence. A gut's cross to Sutton. The back heel, Larson! What a save by Stefan Klaus, which keeps Rangers in the match. Unbelievable save. What a ball from Chris Sutton. You see, he's played in here, great touch. He's very aware of where Larson is, and I don't know how Stefan Klaus gets to that. Henry Larson does everything right. He won't believe he hasn't scored. Klaus can't be far away from Player of the Year, in my estimation. Not another demonstration of his prodigious talent. Petrov drives in the corner, headed away by Moore. That's Lennon and Ulrich Larsson. Now Rangers look to mount a counter-attack, but that's unlike Barry Ferguson to relinquish possession quite so easily. Back it comes. And spins off the head of Rickson and out. 49,740 inside Ibrox for this crucial match in the title race. Can Celtic claw their way back into it? Rangers, if they win the remaining games, even if they lose here, can still land the championship and end Martin O'Neill's winning run. But it's been a dramatic title race and there might just be another twist or two in the tail. Or two before the match is over. I don't feel it's finished yet. I think there's more to come. But don't ask me what end. <laughs> Just you think of a man of the match. That's enough pressure on you at the moment. Here we can. Mikel Arteta. Good strength. Turning away from Valhadden. Holds off Lennon as well, but short with the pass for Rickson. And Alan Thompson slid in to turn the ball away. Rickson not happy that he caught the end of the challenge, but I'm sure that was the momentum of Thompson carrying him. Well, through. Thompson's going for the ball, no question about that. I think this is momentum as well. Hugh, Hugh Dallas has given the throw, the throw into Celtic, Rickson taking it from the wrong place. It's almost like musical managers down there. When one goes back into the dugout, the other one pops out. It's like a cuckoo clock check as they come in and out. It's Alan Thompson suffering a bit at the moment. Martin O'Neill. Getting a serious talking to from the fourth official, Willie Young. Steve Walford as well, gets the hand on the shoulder and the instruction is to calm down. Easier said than done yeah. when all this is going on around you. There's a lot of passion out there at this moment in time. Celtic desperate for the three points to keep themselves in the title race. Rangers know that two each gives them a big advantage. There's Newman in Winter Gat as well. Neil McCann on the left with Peter Lovenkrantz on the right side of a, a four man attack at the ring at the moment. Only Arteta and Ferguson in the midfield. Rickson tried to nick the ball through for Moore and he was taken out, says Hugh Dallas, and uh, for a series of offences, Chris Sutton joins the crime count. I think Chris was warned earlier on, not much in that. Rix is over the top of his leg. Hugh Dallas right away awarding a free kick, but it's persistent fouling against Chris Sutton. He was warned earlier. Three goals and six bookings so far. Arteta squares it for Ferguson. Chipped in for Michael Moles, a spectacular effort, but uh, 
Celtic don't mind that because it's well off target. It's well over the bar, but good skill from Michael Moles. Variation in the free kick from Rangers. Arteta playing it square to Ferguson. Can get a shot, plays it into Michael Moles. Good first touch, but he takes the ball too early. That's why it goes well over the crossbar. I think Stephen Thompson's about to come on, Trick, is that right? Yeah, there's been a lot of activity in the Rangers dugout of a powwow between Alec McLeish and Fouters and Andy Watson, and the result of all that is that Thompson will be just into play as Rangers really go for the point they need here. Yeah, don't forget, if Rangers can get another goal, they will settle happily for a draw. It keeps them in the box seat as far as the title goes. Celtic have to win this game to have any hope of denying Rangers the title. Neil McCann overran that under pressure from the Gatt, and that takes the pressure off Celtic. And we're into the final ten minutes of regulation time at Ibrox. Uh, BBC means big games and none bigger than the UEFA Cup final in three and a half weeks' time in Seville. Celtic against Porto, and I just know you're not going to miss that one. First Scottish team in a European final since Dundee United in 1987. And Celtic looking to be the first Scottish team to win a European final since Aberdeen exactly 20 years ago. Rangers with uh, two thirds of the match possession. But uh, what can they do with it? Celtic at the moment seemingly happy to leave them with possession as long yep. as it's not damaging them in the final third. Well, Celtic have defended very well. They've doubled up very well in the wide area, stopping loving cans of a can at this moment in time, getting anywhere near the, the dead ball line. It's going to be Thompson for Moles. As Moles loses out aerially to Jos Falhara. Rangers will make another change. Maybe not. They were wanting to. Couldn't quite get that electronic board up in the air quick enough. Willie really Young's lost a yard of pace. Just a yard. He never had very much <laughs> of the best in terms. In McCann in the Ibrox sunshine. Newman. Now it's Arteta. Ferguson, and didn't get it back from Moles, and now Larson looking to get away from Ferguson, but he was held, no doubt about it, frustration written all over the face of Barry Ferguson. And the substitution has changed, it still is Stephen Thompson coming on, but it will instead be Peter Lovinkrantz who comes off. I'm not too surprised at that one, Rob. Pretty certain, Ronald De Boer will play away on the right-hand side, now Thompson will play. Central area beside Michael Moles. And those, those two linked up very well last week in the Scottish Cup tie against Marlow. Petrov tries to escape Arteta. Does so successfully. Now Lennon. Sutton and Larson tried to combine. Looking for a free kick. No free kick. Down to Rickson. The pass picks out Arteta, but very quickly on top of Arteta was Neil Lennon. He's having a, a big influence here, as he tends to do. He's sitting right on Mikel Arteta. Moore, it's beyond Thompson and no harm done. And that's disappointing for Rangers. Not the best of all from Craig Moore. I think Stephen Thompson was looking for a ball at the feet. Foul against Sutton. He's already been booked, he doesn't want to start rocking up another series of offences. That's a foul by Thompson and Rickson. Alan Thompson must be another who's sailing yes. a bit close to a yellow card. I, I, think, think. I think there's a few, there's been a few, a few infringements during the match. Eighty-four minutes played. Alan Thompson intercepts. 
hands off Ferguson. That's lovely skill. Kept that in despite the pressure. Larson flicks it on for Agats. And Didi Agats has scored five times in three seasons, and uh, maybe that tells you why. That was never going to be number six, that's for certain. Good move from Celtic, no good play from Thompson. Henrik Larson involved again. Rangers taking route one. Uh, Moles brushed aside by Baldi. Playing for a penalty kick from the Rangers fans, more than from the Rangers players there. I think it was in hope more than anything else. Sutton backing into Moore. Craig Moore still got the header. But Celtic have possession. Thompson to Sutton. No quarter given by these two, Sutton and Moore. Hartson may be off, but there's still a very physical tussle going on now between Sutton and Moore. That's off Rickson, the ball's out, and the seconds are ticking away for in Celtic's favour, you would have to think, in the 86th minute. That's off ahead. I got shorts, it's wide, it's closer this time though. That was better, not far away there from Didier Agat, picks up the loose ball again, it's not the first time he's managed to do that, round about the edge of the box, it's a decent shot, it's just past the post. Yeah, just a couple of feet away this time from his first goal of the season. Flicks it in, Thompson's after it, but he can't get there, and Jos Valharan hurts by Thompson's challenge. It looks it. like a, a sore one, Tony. It is a sore one, Stephen Thompson's a bit lays. Enthusiasm again, trying to get to the ball first. It's as much as Chris Sutton that causes the problem. He's certainly a free kick against Stephen Thompson. Sandy, you have to admire the energy of Celtic. This is an amazing effort it is. Uh, with these two huge games in four days. Yeah, the, you know, we're talking about how tired Celtic would be with the legs go. They certainly haven't gone at all, and they've been so fresh, so bubbly in the match and played well. It's Baldy. I think when you look at the players that have come in as well, Rob, they've been exceptionally well. And that man there, Ole Larson, he's been exceptional. Yeah, he was caught there by Ronald De Boer. Nothing too malicious about it, but it is a free kick. And off the ball, Alan Thompson and Fernando Rickson are having a furious row. It's not for the first time, those two. Hugh Dallas intervenes, and uh, we can do without that at this late stage, but there's been a lot of sniping going on between the two. Here is Thompson. He's got beyond Rickson, stopped by Moore. Sutton plays it in, Ferguson blocks it. Now Arteta. Good play from Agats as Arthur Newman tried to knock that down the touchline. Good challenge from Agat. And that's a complete waste which infuriates manager Alec McLeish with uh, not much more than two minutes left of the 90. Yeah, it's a poor ball from Amarusha. Rangers just don't play that way, they don't play back to front, they play wide through the middle of the park. And then link with the front players. And so uh, John Vectors and Alec McLeish indicating towards Hugh Dallas that time is being wasted and they want it added on. They want every chance they can have of getting this game squared. Celtic have the 2 1 advantage. Those two first half goals from Thompson and Hartson. One of the Boer was who got a goal back. But the way things stand, Celtic. We'll claim all three points. Four minutes will be added. And we've got 90 seconds left. So five and a half minutes between Celtic and a vital three points. And it would open up to the title race, you would feel again, even though Rangers can still win it with, certainly, with their own games. They certainly make it uh, very much more competitive, that's for certain. There's a lot of hard games left for both teams. Lots of teams in the league playing well at this moment in time. Yeah, you look at the likes of uh, Dundee and Hearts, teams, Kilmarnock, teams well capable of taking points away from the old firm. Indeed, they've uh, done it before, all three. 
Newman's cross. That's Ferguson. That's Valhadam dominating. Down goes Henrik Larsson holding his head. The bodies are tumbling all over the shop. <laughs> it's very competitive now, isn't it? Celtic are desperate to hold on to all three points. Rangers desperate to get the equaliser. There's a lot of tempers there, almost a boiling point. And Henrik Larsson having a word with Hugh Dallas there and saying he was caught in the head. And Stefan Kloss is up on the halfway line. I thought he was going all the way. Ferguson's free kick, in goes Amoruso, it's wide. Celtic survive. And uh, there was an angry reaction there from uh, Broto, and he's booked. He threw the ball away, Rob, that's what happened. Amoruso gets the header in here, it's past the post. It comes to the goalkeeper, and he, he just knocks it away. Cost him a yellow card, and I'm sure there'll be a little bit more extra time. So Broto makes his mark on the game with a, a yellow card. He didn't want the ball back that quickly. He's looking for time to evaporate. These Rangers fans clinging on to the four minutes of stoppage time, hoping their team can strike, hoping their team can square the game. A draw for Rangers, and you would imagine the title would be over. Stephen Thompson. To Fernando Rickson. Now with Arteta. Arthur Newman. Rangers pushing players further and further forward. Amaruso in, Valhadan away. Amaruso again. Up goes Thompson against Balding. Stephen Thompson was jumping straight into the Celtic defender, and Hugh Dallas had a good view of that. It's a silly chance from Stephen Thompson. He's just taking the pressure off the Celtic defence. If Bobo Baldi wins the header, fair and square, then Rangers may pick up the second ball, but as soon as you get that type of challenge going in, Celtic are going to get the free kick and takes the pressure off them. Craig Moore's header. Newman hammers it down towards Michael Moles. Baldi won the header. Moles still down. Rickson sprinting forward. Neil Lennon made the challenge. That's Ronald De Boer. That's Jackie McNamara. Michael Moles doesn't want that because he's just got back to his feet. And there's a free kick against him. Fouls each. Second tenor, that's Larson. And Barry Ferguson cushions the header back to Kloss. Stefan Kloss didn't get the clearance he was looking for. Didier Gap heads the ball out of play. Two and a half minutes added of the four to come. Thompson chasing. That's out, who's your winner of the match, Sandy? Well, there's been a few contenders off for Rangers, I think Craig Moore at the back's been immense. But Ulrich Larson coming in today for Celtic at the back, he's been absolutely magnificent. Never missed time to tackle all day, won so many headers, and he's now back as Scotland man of the match. His first start in ten games, Ulrich Larson, and that's a fair achievement to be one of the match in this sort of company. Newman's up and under into the area, out comes Javier Sanchez, Broto, and what a good catch that is with Lorenzo Amoruso bearing down on you. Big spider made, made it look easy, kept his eye on the ball. McCann against McNamara, Jackie McNamara lets it run, and Celtic now seconds away from victory here. Four minutes to be added, and that's the full-time whistle. Celtic have resuscitated their title challenge with Rangers' first defeat at Ibrox in 18 months. 
The final all-far match of the season has gone to Martin O'Neill and his team. And two amazing victories inside four days. John Harson won the penalty for goal number one. That was Alan Thompson. He scored number two himself. Ronald De Boer pulled the goal back for Rangers. But Celtic held out for victory by two goals to one. The UEFA Cup finalists are now five points behind Rangers with a game in hand. And you get the feeling there's a bit more drama to come before this Premier League Championship is sorted out. It's been an incredible effort by these Celtic players who gave so much in Oporto on Thursday night to reach their first European final for 33 years. And high on adrenaline, they've done it again at Ibrox with a famous victory. And this was the goal which gave Rangers some hope in the second half. Ronald De Boer heading in from Arthur Newman's cross to make it 2-1. But Rangers failed to score again. And uh, it needed all the brilliance of Stefan Klaus to keep out Henrik Larsson with that effort from Sutton's back heel. That kept Rangers in it, but Celtic have won it by two goals to one. Here's Ulrich Larsson, the man of the match. Ulrich, well, congratulations. That presumably opens up the title race once again, doesn't it? Yeah, we knew we had to come here and, and get a win to give us a chance to get back in the championship race. And I thought we played very well after the first 10 minutes, first half. They could have been one or two up, but uh, we were lucky to miss the chances and we went up and scored. Do you feel that the, the whole events in Portugal lifted the whole place that you came back from there with the adrenaline going? Well, we've had a few games where we haven't played that well um, against Hearts. I must say Hearts did very well to, to, to win the game. And in, in Porto, it was, it was hard getting the win, but a semi-final is just all about winning. And we got the confidence and came here and won 2-1, and it's just tremendous. You still need, of course, uh, Rangers to drop points elsewhere, but you know you've talked about the way other teams in the SPL are playing. Do you think that other teams are capable of doing your favour against Rangers? Well, we just have to wait and see. You know, the, the other teams still have a lot to play for. It's a European place, and uh, we knew if we came here and won, we could put uh, pressure on Rangers, and uh, we've done that now, but we still got an extra game to win against Motherwell, and if I remember right, we lost when we played that last time, so we have to go out and win that game as well. Well, these Celtic fans out there, I think, are we'll drinking champagne tonight. You can have a bottle of Bank of Scotland. Well done, man, the match today, Rick. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And those Celtic fans celebrating two massive victories within the space of four days. They have a trip to Seville to look forward to. And now their renewed League Championship challenge will produce some terrific football over the next four weeks. A victory for Celtic here at Ibrox by two goals to one. And those Celtic fans, many of whom I'm sure will have already booked their places for Seville on May the 21st, have another marvellous victory to celebrate. There's the final score here at Ibrox. Rangers won. Celtic too. And I think over the piece, Craig, you cannot deny that Celtic perhaps deserved those three points. No, I said before the game I thought it was going to be difficult for them to come here after uh, the midweek performance, but uh, I thought all the hard work was done in the first half. Fantastic performance after a shaky first five minutes. Could have scored even more goals and in the second half we said they would sit in and make it difficult for Rangers. Although at one point it looked like a dangerous ploy, the first 20 minutes of the second half, Rangers were dangerous. But after that, I think Rangers ran out of ideas. And on another day, Henrik Larsson bags a couple of goals and it could be an even more emphatic win. But fantastic week for Celtic Football Club. And it's a remarkable turnaround as well, Gordon, because before the Boa Vista game, there was no doubt that Celtic were stuttering a little bit. They'd lost a little bit of the spark. They ground out the win on Thursday night without ever looking impressive. My goodness, they were impressive today, weren't they? I thought they did very well. I mean, the, the game was going back and forward. They could have lost goals as well as, as, as scoring the goals as they did. But the thing was, you look back now and you think, well, Thursday night, it was all about getting to the final and all about being in the UEFA Cup final. And didn't, the, the performance didn't matter. But maybe that just turned it around for Celtic again in respect to the fact that all of a sudden they now uh, get the confidence from that. And then they can put that to the side now to the 21st of May, concentrate on the league. They came here, they certainly didn't look like a team that were tired from Thursday night anyway. And on the day, I'd say it was tactically, it was very important what Martin O'Neill did. And it worked. And as Craig said as well, it was, the game was won in the first half. 
Absolutely. Let's take a look at the Bank of Scotland Premier League table then and the significance of Celtic's victory is that they are now just five points behind Rangers with a game in hand. That game, of course, against bottom of the table Motherwell. But as Zuli Larson pointed out, Fir Park has not been a happy hunting ground for either of the old firm this season and they'll take nothing for granted there. But what a run into the title we're going to have now with Rangers' two away games coming at Dundee and Hearts. And arguably, of the four remaining games, they'll have the harder matches to play, Gordon. Yeah, you could say that because, uh, you know, Dundee and Hearts are, are two teams who have been in form. And uh, the thing is, though, Rangers, all of the, the games they have left in, in the final five, Rangers had three at home, Celtic uh, had, had obviously three away. But the thing is, that's one of Celtic's away games out the way tonight, today. And they've got the points. And, and the major thing today was the fact Celtic had to win. And that's what they went and did. They did the job. Rangers could have got by with a draw today. But Celtic have got the full points. And, and great credit to them for doing that. I mean, it was a good performance. But the main thing is the pressure they were under to go and get those points was, was, was really crucial. And they've done their business. Uh, every player dug very deep indeed on both sides, it has to be said. But Celtic got the vital goals and uh, that first half will certainly live long in the memory. Absolutely packed with incident. Here are the goals which gave Celtic a 2-0 half-time lead. Craig, this was the first of them. Yeah, as I said at half-time, you know, sloppy defending from Amoruso and Alan McLeish will not be happy with that because it gives Celtic an early lead really and uh, Thompson stuck the penalty away well. But you're looking for him to stay on his feet. And he didn't, he just sort of hung the leg out there and he looks disappointed, but there's, there's no doubt about it, it was a penalty. Just what Rangers didn't need. And it just gave Celtic the ascendancy. And Thompson, you know, uh, Larson's missed some penalties, uh, Hartson has as well. So Thompson stood up there in the cauldron of the, of the atmosphere here and tucked it away, he didn't blast it, side footed it. And I thought he was a quality performer as well today, Alan Thompson, and uh, he could have been uh, as well man of the match. But, uh, you know, Celtic from, from 1 to 11, really, and uh, even Brotto coming on looked comfortable, uh, performed really well. But again, the space behind Newman and a gas pace down the right, and as I say, not many players will catch this, keeps it in. Great flick, and there's who do you want on the end of it? John Hartson. As I say, it's not Larson today scoring the goals, it's Hartson and Thompson, but Larson had a fantastic performance and played his part, but Hartson's been in great form this season and tucked it away brilliantly. I think the very fact you've mentioned uh, Alan Thompson and a gap there creating that goal. Freed today because the Celtic played two fullbacks in McNamara and Ulrich Lawson allowed a gap in Thompson to go and have more of a, an impact on the game. Mm. And uh, we saw what both did. Thompson, as I agree with Craig Thompson, an outstanding game and a gap's made a goal there. Yeah, the, the, the tactical master plan of Martin Hill worked, worked wonderfully. As we expected, Rangers come out of the blocks at the start of the second half, determined to get a goal early, put them back, back into the match. They got the goal and it was a good goal. It was a very well worked goal, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, a, it was a magnificent goal, but I, I think that I said before that Alec McLeish had seen what happened and I thought he would make the change. This was a, a early in his second half when Rickson went through though, and, and he really could have passed that ball to Michael Moles. Determined probably to get a shot in, but you just see Michael Moles freeing himself, peeling away on the left hand side. If he just slips that ball into him, Michael Moles got a clear cut chance, but uh, in the heat of the battle you sometimes don't see those passes on and there's, the challenges were coming in thick and fast. And that was a warning for Celtic, and uh, this is the goal which made it 2-1. Ronald De Boer with a terrific header, just as he had, in fact, at Celtic Park in the, one of the earlier league matches this season. Yeah, I mean, did he a gaff there, gets caught, not tracking back, Newman, and uh, well, there's a player on form, Ronald De Boer. Not the tallest player in the world, but I tell you what, that, that was a great header. And at that stage of the game, it looked as if Rangers were going to go in to get a second, but uh, they didn't, and Celtic stifled them well. But it's a fantastic ball in, and there's De Boer. It was, you know, he played well today again, but uh, Celtic managed to shackle him well, but that's a fantastic header and uh, put Celtic back under a bit of pressure. The ball just stuck under his feet there. I mean, it was a, a good ball to the back post. It's, it's headed down by a a bit of a mistake, but just couldn't quite get his shot in there around the but It was under his feet and... Uh, that was probably the... I don't think they'd bring just another clear-cut chance after that. Well, they've got so many bodies back Celtic, aren't they, defending their box, and we said they were going to do that. Sometimes it's a bit dangerous, but today it paid off. Yeah, they live dangerously at times, but in the end they pick up the three points. Martin O'Neill was uh, as happy as I think we've ever seen him on Thursday night in Portugal. I can't imagine he's any less happy today. Here he is with Chick. Yeah, it's been a fine old week for you, Martin, hasn't it? <laughs> it's a great effort, considering the circumstances, you know, coming off the plane about three or four o'clock on Friday morning. Fantastic effort by the team, without a doubt. You were watched today by Jose Mourinho, and uh, I think you'll go away baffled by your tactics, because traditionally, of course, 
you changed things today from what you usually do. Well, we, we changed it because uh, we're away from home. We still want, still want to win the game. Uh, we have a chance. There are a number of reasons for it, and obviously tiredness and a, and a few players uh, unavailable for selection as well. Too. So all of those things play, played its part. But I thought that uh, Jackie McNamara did exceptionally well for us today, as did everyone, to be perfectly honest. And, um, and, we, and as I said to you before, we're not going to give the championship up without a fight. Still, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. I have to ask you about some of your injuries, Rob Douglas, first of all, and Paul Lambert, who missed the game today. Mm. What is it? Well, Paul, Paul, as I said to you at the, at the uh, start of the, the day, is always desperate to play. But I think it was the right decision because he gets a few more days proper rest and uh, his foot's sore. But you know what Paul's like, you're going to play through the pain barrier. Johan Malby is as brave as a lion, but there was absolutely no point in playing them today. They just, they, you know, they, they just weren't properly right. And Rab is, uh, has the thigh problem has reoccurred again, so that, that's, that's something we'll have to uh, keep an eye on. But no one's been in the clouds on the horizon, because it's been a fantastic week for you, hasn't it? You now, you now need, of course, someone else to do you a favour in terms of the championship. Yeah, well, that's, that's true, but I mean, we had to summon up uh, great reserves of, of energy and strength and determination here. Coming to Ibrox against a side that have been, uh, have been excellent all season is, is no mean feat. We've come here and we've won, and uh, we had to do that. And I thought we, we deserved to win the game. We, we played some excellent stuff. We got ourselves in front at half time. I knew there'd be an onslaught second half, but um, after the first 20 minutes of it, I thought we coped rather well. The victory, Martin, in Portugal must have been a major factor. I mean, the adrenaline must have been pumping in the players. Can you imagine coming here this morning, had you lost? Oh, that, there's no doubt about that. That's if spots and maybes. We, we didn't do. Yeah, the adrenaline can keep you so far. But uh, at the end of the day, we had to win the game through ability. And. Uh, and I, I was, I mean, I'm exceptionally pleased. It seems as if I, I'm rather calm. And, uh, but a great win for us today, considering all the circumstances. It was that, man. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yes, a significant victory for Celtic, and they narrow the gap to five points. We saw Ronald De Boer getting one back for Rangers uh, early on in the second half, but Celtic still threatened, in fact, uh, particularly through the through the aerial threat, which uh, we saw emerging early on in that second half, Gordon. That's right. As, as Martin O'Neill said there, 20 minutes, Rangers were really on top, got the goal, and then you know, Celtic started to get more and more into it, and the, the ball's just played in here. Alan Thompson, a game of delivery. Great challenge from Craig Moore, because Chris Sutton's on the end of that one. When you've got somebody like Thompson playing the ball into the box, so I mean, his delivery all day from, from the set piece was fantastic. And that's Henrik Larsson there, what he, we've seen him do that so many times, he's coming across the defender, into the back of the net, he was unlucky there, but again it's all down to the delivery. Fantastic ball from Thompson, and as I say, put it in there and you'll always give teams problems. Uh, one or two chances fell to Henrik Larsson today, he wasn't able to take them, he won't mind too much about that, given in mind the final score. My have from Martin, and let's hear the reaction of Alex McLeish. Alec, did you feel when you got that goal back there that you were going to salvage the, the draw that you probably wanted out of that game? Yeah, that's what we spoke about at half time. You know, let's see if we can salvage this. Difficult when you're playing against uh, a side, such a good side as Celtic, who have gone two goals up by your own patch at half time. Whereas I thought we should have been two up in the first 20 minutes. Uh, they, they set a stall, they sit in, and then they pick us off in the counter attack. And it made it difficult for us, but I still felt there was goals in us. It's Celtic's day, but I guess it's important for you to remember that you still have this championship in your grasp. Yeah, the, the simple formula is if, that if we win every game, we're the champions. Um, we know that it, we still have very hard games to negotiate, but uh, that's that's a simple formula. How did you feel Rangers played today? Well, I thought we started great. Fantastic. First 15 minutes, as I said to you, we've, we've, we've actually missed three good chances. You know, I think Claudio, Ronald and Lorenzo had a, an open header at the corner. And if we'd gone ahead, you know, and I was reminding the players we can't keep passing up these chances. And then, uh, you know, we've given away the penalty and, you know, it set us in the back foot. So I, I think we've played really well up to then. And we, we maybe, when Celtic they got the goals, they were able to sit back and, you know, we, we didn't quite have the... Uh, the, you know, the cut and thrust that we had in the first 20. And again, you weren't shy to make the, the tactical switches, except I guess this time it didn't come off for you. Yeah, Martin uh, didn't totally surprise us, but you know, we looked at the personnel and we thought possibly could go to a 4-4-2 and, um, you know, it was, it was a, a wee problem for us uh, in, in that way. You know, we didn't really get the, the, the midfield supremacy that um, I would have expected from uh, the Rangers team and the players that I have at my disposal. So, briefly, what do you say to the Rangers fans and, and I guess your own players today? Is it just 
keep your shape, don't panic, it should still be all right for you. Yeah, and you know, the, the Rangers fans understand they'll be disappointed, but uh, they're not as disappointed as the players and I am. Uh, we will bounce back, and I'm sure the players have got a character to do that. Thanks, Art. Okay, thanks. Yes, Rangers fair, of course, still within their own hands. It's important to stress that. I mentioned that Henrik Larsson uh, got a couple of chances. He always does. Unusually, he wasn't able to take any of them. But I have to say, Craig, that Stefan Kloss had a couple of outstanding saves here, didn't he? Yeah, as I said before, on another day, Larsson bags a couple of goals, no problem. I think Chris Sutton there just stole the ball from Barry Ferguson. And uh, plays a good little ball into Larsson. On his left foot again, not his strongest, but uh, he'd be a wee bit disappointed. He never got a little bit more power into that. But... I thought his work rate and his general play were very, very good and the link-up between the front two for Celtic was excellent all day. And Henrik Larsson there uh, towards the end brought an even better save out of uh, Stefan Claus Gordon, didn't he? Yeah, it was, this was great work initially by Chris Sutton. A little chip ball in from a gap. It takes his chest, wonderful back heel here into space and, uh, you know, Larson, he's unlucky to extend, but Stefan Claus once again, many times have we seen it this season, he pulls out those kind of saves. Unorthodox to a certain degree, but you stop them how you can, and he used his feet to get the ball away there, but uh, that could certainly have been a goal. So Celtic pick up a crucial three points with a 2-1 victory. We've now been joined by Mark Lawrenson, of course, we're working in the, in the game from our, for our colleagues in the south. Uh, deserved victory for Celtic, Mark? I think overall, Dougie, definitely. Um, the Rangers started very well. I think uh, Martin O'Neill second-guessed Rangers the way they play. I think after seeing all the old firm games this year, down the left hand side, Rangers have been very good against Celtic, so he brought McNamara in a gap in front of him as well. And I think once Celtic scored the first goal, generally they're in the control of the game. I can't believe how badly Rangers defended for the sort of the second half of the first half. I mean, they were all over the place. And to give the penalty away, I mean, it was a shocking way to give the penalty away. Yeah. The game was played at a frightening pace, particularly in that first half, wasn't I think, it? Well, and, you, know, you end up looking at the second half and you're thinking, oh, it's not as good as the first half. Mm. But it's impossible because it was just, it's, it's like 200 miles an hour, there's mistakes, there's chances. I mean, you know, coming up from the south, it's fantastic to come and see the games because it's carnage. Mm. You know, absolutely everything happens in the games. <laughs> it's fantastic. And we haven't, seen, we haven't seen a sending off this, this season, which normally we do. But um, I was surprised that, that Celtic kept going. And I think once De Boer scored, I think you think Rangers are going to push on. They're going to score, they're going to make more chances. Then Celtic very cleverly made the change, Hearts and off, Sutton up front, held the ball up, and in the end Celtic finished stronger than Rangers. Yeah, and huge credit to them, because after coming back from the, that match on Thursday night, which wasn't a great match as we know, no. but the result was what mattered. But but not to be only able that, to lift themselves for this. Talking not only that, the fact of, you know, just, just the emotional thing of playing in the semi-final, getting through, you know, coming back, they must have had a few beers, you'd have to think. If you don't, I mean, you know, they should all be monks. So, <laughs> And then, you know, if you're a Rangers fan and player today you're thinking they've played on Thursday they've done all the travelling we've been off all week we've been doing a bit of training we've got to go after them and um, he's got it O'Neill hasn't he mm. you know he's got that certain something and um, it's a fantastic result for them but it's still Rangers title because if, if they win the games they, they've won the league and what do they go to Dundee I think Dundee they Harps, have to go to but, Dundee and Harps yeah but with the players they've got they should do it you still fancy they would, they would hold on let's take a look at the goals from, from your point of view Matt you haven't had a chance to, to tell us what you thought of them although you're obviously critical of the, the Rangers defence for the penalty well taken penalty certainly what about yeah this, th this is I mean Larson does fantastic here after a gats cross it's great flick and the thing was though Hartson's just jogged in from the halfway line and, and, no, and nobody picked him up it was a great finish from De Boer after well, it was a cross from Newman that, that, mm. that made it. But to give that penalty away, I think with Amaruso was he could have come and fouled Hartson outside the penalty. Mm. He let him get in, and you mm. know nowadays if you tackle somebody in the penalty mm. and you get it slightly wrong, it's a penalty. Yeah, Even let's here, just, <laughs> <laughs> let's just remind you of how the league table looks tonight. And as you have said, Matt, you would fancy Rangers perhaps to hold on to win the title, but would you fancy Celtic to to win the UEFA Cup? Porto's a tough. Tough opposition, aren't they? Well, they are, but I mean, the, the manager was here, the Porter manager was here today, and I think the thing with Celtic is, after seeing him I think, eight or nine times this year, they're much better when teams come onto them, which Porto will do. So I think, as a, from a neutral's perspective, it'd be great. Celtic win the UEFA Cup, and Rangers look like they're going to win the treble for me. I would rather be in Rangers' position in the league than Celtic, yeah. certainly. Good. Mark, good to see you. As always, glad you enjoyed the game today. We'll catch your breath and uh, have a look back to yesterday's four matches in the Bank of Scotland Premier League, beginning with a very big match for Hearts at East End Park. This was about as good as it got in the first half at East End Park. A grim first 45. Ended with a scoring chance for Dunfermline's Barry Nicholson. But he failed to catch the shot. On 56 minutes, the only goal of the game. 
Lee Bullen's foul on Hart's top scorer Mark De Vries and Kenny Clark had no doubts that was a penalty. Bullen too tight on De Vries and lured into the foul. Put Stephen Presley on the spot and he tends to score. This is fourth successful penalty conversion of the season. And the skipper's fifth goal in all. Man of the match, De Vries, should have had his 15th goal of the season. But before he hit the net, he'd used an arm to control the cross from Jean-Louis Valois. More bad news for him was the hamstring problem which later led to him coming off. And here was another opportunity for Hearts to seal the points. Andy Kirk kept himself onside, but chose to shoot from...